Good evening and welcome to Wapakoneta High School, where tonight WSN brings you the Division IV District Final. We have the St. Henry Redskins here to play the Marion Local Flyers. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to be play by play alongside Mr. Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, in the regular season, Marion Local wins twice. This is game three, and St. Henry's a whole lot better. Well, you know, we always say as coaches, as ex-coaches, it's so hard to beat a team three times. So, and you hit it right. We talked in the uh, selection show right. about how improved St. Henry was, and they could be dangerous come district tournament time. Well, here we are. Here we are. St. Henry is 14-11 on the season. How about keys to the game for them? Well, first of all, for them, one, they need to move the basketball. You know, that creates so much movement. That creates pulls help side away a little bit, able to reverse the ball and get the ball or get open. Two, they need to win all 50-50 balls on the court. You know, every possession becomes so important, I think, this time of the year. And thirdly, you hear it all the time, but they need to rebound on both sides of the ball, not just rebound or both sides of the court. One, uh, Coach really talked about winning, getting 40% of the offensive boards. That's a big number. That, that's a huge number. Well, the Mary Local Flyers, they come in at 20 and 4. They were champions of the Midwest Athletic or Conference. How about keys for them? Well, one, they need to certainly take away the easy baskets by St. Henry. And I, you know, watching them on film, St. Henry, they, they do a very good job of getting some easy ones inside. Two, they need to handle the pressure, you know, no live ball turnovers. And three, you hear it every game, Mark dominate the glass, win the rebounding battle. I think that's been a constant every single game that we have done this year. It's Marion Local, it's St. Henry. It's for the right to go to the regional tournament next week. It is coming up next. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Wapakoneta High School. It is St. Henry and it is Marion Local and it is for the Division IV District Championship. The lights are out and we're going through the starting lineups for the and uh, the St. Henry team. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Layfield Industrial Welding and Supplies with locations in Greenville and in Coldwater. Here's a St. Henry document. Now they're 14 and 11 and they've done a whole lot of damage in the second half of the year. Six and three in a Midwest Athletic Conference. And as we go through their starting lineup here in just a moment, this is a team that uh, only has one senior on the roster. Number four is Caden Bergman, 5'11", junior. He scores 17, 7.2 points per game. Number five is Evan Bauer, 6'2 junior. 15.2 and seven boards for him. Logan Link wears number 11, three and a half points per game for him. Luke Beike wears 24. He is a 6'4 junior, averaging 15 points and five boards. And the only senior, John Hardings, who wears number 33. 6'3 senior, averaging six points and five boards for him. Very local, Kirk Gunnemeyer's team. They were the champions of the conference this year. 20 and four, eight and one in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Here is their starting lineup. They will go with Jaden Mesher. Jaden wears number 11, 6'2 senior at 13 a game. Tate Hess, 6'2 senior, averaging 12.8 points per game. 8.8 points per game, excuse me. Brandon Ike, 6'4 junior at 3.7. 23 is Austin Niekamp, 6'8 sophomore at seven and a half. And Jack Kanapke, 6'9", junior at 13.3 and 8.1 rebounds as the lights come back on. And Jerry, this is a basketball team. Well, here's our officials. Let's make sure we get those guys out here. Matt Mosier, Bruce Bay, Michael Reinhardt. Matt Mosier has the basketball. He's about to toss it at middle court, mid court, And we are ready for basketball. Jerry, this is a Marion local team's had a couple of key injuries, but all it has done is make them deeper on the season. Yes, it has. And, you know, that's one of the things going into tournament. You need that depth. We've seen that so often about so many school, so many teams that have played a lot of players during the regular season, how advantageous that is getting into the district tournament. It's Niekamp and Hardings, and the ball goes into the backcourt to Link. This is Bowers on the wing. Hardings on top. Bergman tries to get in the lane, skip past the Link. The typical Mary Local, very solid defensive team. Back and down inside, turn around, jumper rolls around, fight for the rebound. Hardings gets it, he's gonna go right back up. Missed that one, and it goes off of Kanapke. I am amazed when I say this, but how much better? We talked about it, and I'll probably overuse it. How much better St. Henry has gotten throughout the year? And again, with a young team, you expect it, but it doesn't always happen. Great coaching job. Here's Hardings inside, spins on Kanapke. Bounces out, rebound comes to Mesher. This is Tate Hess headed the other way. 
Hank has to save it out near midcourt. That was Luke Pullman. Pullman started tonight. The lineup was different than what we had anticipated. He started this evening instead of Brandon Ike. Yep, they're going to give it to you. You've yep. got to take it. Three-point field goal drops down for Pullman. That's one reason he's in the game. He's really good at that. His 27th on the season. He's one of those guys who got a lot of playing time with the injury to Mesher and then another injury to Kanapke. Link gets a three look. Ball's tipped loose and Logan Link will track it down. Well, they wanted 40% of those offensive boards and they're starting yeah. out pretty well at it. They certainly are. They're hammering the offensive glass at this end. No score yet a minute and a half in, but they have been on the glass. Here's Link. I think the Redskins are a team that just have the right kind of players that maybe don't appear in the statistical column big, but they offer so much. Harding is trying to go baseline, works down low. Here's a spin move in the lane for him, and he scores. John Hardings has the first basket. Right there, I, I was glad he did that because I was going to emphasize, you know, Mark, we talk about big men and their footwork and their control of their body and how well they do that. He's excellent at that. There's Mesher to the rim. Jaden Mesher has a basket. Averages 13 a game. 5-2 Flyers, two minutes into this one. So far, very, very good offense against very strong defenses. Bergman inside. Got Mesher on his back. Drop step power move. He's got the post type player move right there, Caden Bergman. Yeah, how about that, bringing the 5-11 guy inside and you know, again, that's by design, too. They yep. really think you look at him and he's strong, yep. physical, he can get that There's up. There's Kneekamp for three. Austin Kneekamp. He lit the lamp up three times and they went over uh, in their tournament, went on the other night when they defeated Fort Recovery. Bikey's little jumper doesn't go. Mesher snatches the rebound out of a crowd. Hess. Mesher, there's a pass inside to Kanapke, down to Kneekamp. Reverse layup, that was pretty. Ah, oh, that's hard to stop. Those two guys have really worked yes, well together have. this year, Jerry. And St. Henry timeout, 4.45 to go in the first. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our replays tonight are brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Quick timeout, uh, St. Henry. Pretty good looks on the offensive end down there by Flyers. I guess what the timeout's about. Yeah, no kidding. And you know, that, that, that's a good timeout this early in the game. And you know, I, I don't think the game's going to get out of hand at all, but yep. you really want to stop that at the beginning. Stop the run, and that's exactly what the timeout was for. Good to see if anybody changed bodies, and they did not. Same starting group is on the floor for both teams. Bowers working on DeCamp. Trying to get Bikey down low. A little flex action. Yep, coming off that, trying to isolate people on the inside. There's Bowers, reverse layup. That was a pretty move. Evan Bowers, who averages 15 a game, has a pair in this one. Good timeout. He's one of the players, I hadn't mentioned his name, but he's one of those players that I watched on film, and I thought, you know, he just adds so much. He's always dangerous. Mesher pass inside Kanapke, who muscles up and will get the first foul of the basketball game. Free throws that are sponsored by Lee's famous recipe. We appreciate their support tonight. Any penetration, and you're going to see that right here, any penetration by Mary Local, for, for that matter, either team, just causes problems with having to help and then dish off to two big men. The foul went to Caden Bergman. Jack Kanapke was a 66% free throw shooter, made the first one. Multiple substitutions in. Hayden Beckman's in the basketball game. Curtis Putoff's in the basketball game. Devin Delseth in the basketball game for St. Henry. And let's see, who came in? Did we get a flyer in the game as well? I thought we had somebody at the bench. Yes, we did. Number 10 is Mitchell Randley is in the basketball game. And another one will check in. And this will be number 15. Brandon Ike. We talked about this before, but you know, actually both coaches, getting those players in in the first quarter, how yep. big that's gonna be later on. Halfway through, 
Both teams have kind of gone typical. They get about this point and they start subbing anyway. So here's Beike working down low. And he will draw a foul from Tate Hess. You're looking at all conference players in this matchup tonight. There are five of them. Two of them play for St. Henry, Evan Bowers and Luke Beike. As you see our Ultimate Outdoor Ohio replay. Three of them for Marion Local, Jaden Mesher, Tate Hess, and Jack Kanapke are all all conference players. Bikey at the line right now, we were talking about how much he's improved during the year and how much more improvement you're going to see in the offseason. Makes the second of the two free throws from Lee's famous recipe. 12-7. Hess matched up out front with Beckman. A little bit of an awkward shot, but Kanapke's Excuse me, Niekamp yep. swooped in and grabbed the ball. He's got seven points already. He's got good basket awareness. You know, he, that's the second one of those, you know, kind of up and unders that he's done. He just knows where he's at all the time. Pull up jumper, does it go? Delseth keeps it alive. There's another one of those offensive rebounds. Nice pass cross court, and Bowers can't muscle up through enough traffic to score. The rebound came to Randley. Ball's tipped out of bounds, and we'll stay with. Know, that could be big later on. You know, St. Henry has had their share of offensive rebounds through this, and they just have a good ball sense. You know, I used to talk about John Wooden. Yep. You know, John Wooden's belief was good rebounders don't rebound the basket. You know, they don't. They expect every shot to be missed, and that's you see that in them. Here's Randley. Kanapke came in at the break for knee camp. This will be a three that will go up for Brandley. Mitchell Randley, 13 three-point field goal for him on the season. Even there, just that little bit of penetration frees up that perimeter shot. Boy, the Flyers are running smooth on offense here in the opening part of this game. Here's a penetration dribble, hard shot, rebound, Hess. Mesher. There's Randley looking inside to Kanapke. Instead, he goes to Mesher on top. Here's Kanapke. Passes it down low. This will be a short jumper. And the rebound secured by Delseth. Here we come the other way. That ball's knocked away by Randley, but back to Delseth. Hess numbers the other way. Tate Hess to the rim. And boy, got it bumped out of his hand and got it back. And yeah, attempting to save the basketball on the baseline was Hayden Beckman, but he was out of bounds. Comes Niekamp back in the game along with Luke Pullman. Quite a bit of physical play there on that last offensive <laughs> drive to the hole. Would you wonder how many times in football the score has been 17-7? Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet a whole bunch. Yep. Yeah, you look at that board, it looks just like a, like a football score, doesn't yeah, it? Doesn't it? Pass to the corner. This will be a jumper out of the corner. And Randley rattles in another one. He's got six in the opening quarter on a pair of three-point field goals. Very local, a team that averages 52.7 a game. They're at 20 already. Here's a foul in the open court. Yeah, we were talking about this being a relatively low-scoring game. And, but again, yep. if the shot's given to you, you take it. And here comes another timeout from St. Henry. they got to weather the storm. The foul went to Delsa. It's 20 to 7. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphi. It's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. We've had four three point field goals already this evening. Home and Insurance is sponsoring our three point field goals tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, does. This, this, this very local team is just running on all cylinders right yeah, now. Yeah, you know, see how smooth they are. You know, the uh, dribble penetration, kick it out, you know, good passing. We we're at 152 to go here in the opening quarter. And it's been a blitz by the Flyers so far. And they're going to get the basketball on the sideline as Hess will pass it in. It looks like he's going to throw it into Luke Pullman and let's see what we do defensively. Got to make some. Make something happen defensively. They're going to switch out front right there. Back cut. Randley inside. Rebound, Delson. Good looking cut, you know, able to find him, but a lot of pressure in there to hit that shot. Here's Bowers for three. 
Randley with a rebound. Numbers. Knee camp right to the rim and finishes. And a foul. Has that look to it. Basket's going to count. Austin knee camp, nine in the opening quarter, looking at 10. You know, we had Marion Local against New Bremen uh, earlier in the year, mid year. I am just amazed at the improvement in that period of time. And they were good then. Yeah. But just the ability to run the floor, the ability to handle the ball in traffic like that, under, you know, while running, and boy, it, impressive. Evan Bowers became the third Redskin to pick up a foul in the opening quarter. He can't, free throw shooting has not been a strength of his this year, but he made that where he's got 10 points here in the opening in the quarter. Right now, everything's a strength. That's tipped that ball. So Henry looking to regroup. Trap out front. Yeah, Bikey was open yeah. underneath, but they can't find him. Tried to get it down. It. Hess is a really good defender. Here's Bowers. And that's what good pressure on the ball does. Three ball missed. Rebound, Randley. He's had a nice opening quarter. That ball's tipped. Bergman gets it. Here's Caden Bergman. Trapped on the baseline, able to kick it out. This will be a three. That will be a yes. three ball for Luke Bikey. He's got four as he makes a home and insurance three-point field goal. He's a pretty versatile player. You know, does a lot inside, can shoot from outside. Good, good all-around player. Plays a first-team all-conference player as a junior in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Flyers going to play last shot, opening quarter, up 13. Yeah, I don't think they came into this expecting 23 in that first quarter. Tipped by, into the backcourt by Link. Hess, lob pass, unable to finish, but Kanapke does. Jack Kanapke scores at the buzzer, and his team will take a 15-point lead at the break. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Holman's Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group. The two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. We had five of those in the opening quarter, but four of them went to the team wearing white, Jerry. Yes, yeah, unbelievable. But you know, again, though, I think you said it well, that, that, that adage of they're clicking on all cylinders. I mean, it's just smooth, everything going on. The leading scorer in the basketball game, Austin Niekamp, who averages 7.5 points per game, has 10 already. He's had good games in the past, though, in uh, matched up with these. When they played in December in the, uh, the Coldwater Tournament, Niekamp had 17 that night, but so did Kanapke as they put four players in double figures that night. Mesher had a big night when Mary Local won the regular season matchup in the MAC Conference. That was a 68-52 win for Marion Local. And they get to basketball first here in quarter number two. Pass off a screen. Mesher's going to get a look at three. Niekamp got that one. Niekamp goes back up with the left hand and will draw another foul. If it's on Bowers, it's his second. Well, you know, right it now, is. the 25-10 point differential, you know, the, the 10 by St. Henry, it's all due to good defense. It's not because of bad offense by St. Henry. It's just that there's a hand on everything. Austin Niekamp makes his first free throw. Gives him 11 in the game. Coach Gunnar Miller. 12th year for him. Eric Rosebeck is in his 14th. Missed free throw, but the rebound secured by the Flyers. There's a pass inside. And he can't going to spin to the goal and scores off a nice catch. Please tell me how you stop that. Oh, I don't right. know. You know, ball pressure maybe, but it's very difficult to stop. And he did a really good job of catch, keep the ball yes. high, and just finish at the rim. That's why I think he's just gotten so much better throughout the year of catching the ball solidly, holding it, turning, pivoting keeping the ball up. Going to get a hold right there. That went to. Was it on Niekamp? Austin Niekamp. I talked with Coach Gunnar Miller much earlier in the season. In fact, I think it might have actually been in a very local football game. He said Austin Niekamp has always had the tools to play, but his body hadn't developed yet. 
and as a freshman, he was played a lot of JV and some varsity this year. That body has continued to develop. A, he's a sophomore. Let, let's look at him yeah, in his senior year. Exactly right. Ball's tip loose. Bergman's going to save it. And it will stay with St. Henry. But see, even there, that, that, that unsettles your offense so much. You know, yes, you still have the possession, but just hands on the ball, always under pressure. Ball goes into the backcourt to Logan Link. St. Henry looking to make something happen. Hardings. Bergman pass inside, and who hit it out of bounds? It went off of Tate Hess. Bell side to inbound. Link. This is Link. Pass it down inside. Hardings doubled up. Link to get a three look. St. Henry rebound. And right to the rim and finishing is Bikey off a good pass. He's got six now. Good job of taking that inside under a lot of pressure inside. If you're wearing a red jersey right now, you just got to keep playing. Just take every possession offensively and defensively and try to get back in it. And even there, even though, you know, the whistle blew on that, but under pressure, Knee Camp had the sense to go back door on it, and if that would have gone, they hadn't called the foul, he would have had a dunk. Logan Link called for grabbing the cutter. His first foul, team's fifth. Pullman. Mesher, runner off the back of the rim. And the rebound to Hardings. Good box out by Hardings to get that. There's a three that'll go up. That one's, it's hard, it goes off into the corner of the flyer bench. Austin kneecap, 13 points already. Back into the basketball game, Hayden Beckman, also Caden. Uh, Curtis put off. You know, it's an interesting matchup when you've got both big men in there. You know, they can play it so well when one gets a rest. You know, play with one in, play with both in. There's Tate Hess. Pullman, they wanted to run a back yes, cut. They yeah, did. really good defense that time. Here's the rim. Beckman, that shot's blocked. Beckman gets it back. Now he's going to go baseline again and goes over traffic. Fight for the rebound. Boy, Beck was hustling right there. And he called timeout, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hardings dove on the floor, grabbed the basketball, called a timeout with 5.43 to go. The negative is that they now have used three timeouts for 5.43 left in the second quarter. You're watching high school basketball on WOSF. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Greenville and in Coldwater. Right now, that scoreboard very heavily favors the Marion local Flyers. Good hustle by Hardings to get the basketball on the floor. He didn't call a timeout so his team could maintain possession, but they will only have two remaining now. That again was off, off an offensive rebound. I will say this about the Redskins. They're one of the best offensive the, rebounding teams I've seen. They have really gone to the glass at that end of the floor. Here's Bikey trying to go baseline, and Hess will be called for the foul. Tate Hess now has two. And you said it. They just need to keep playing. Yeah. You know, keep, keep playing, playing like right there. Yep. You draw a foul. You know, things will drop. Third team foul flyers. Brandon Ike will be in the basketball game. He wears 15. This is Hardings working on Kanapke. Turnaround jumper will go a little bit strong. Mesher rebounds. This Ike just checked in a moment ago. And Pullman. Pullman's going to get a shot. I think that's blocked. I think he got a hand on that. Take a look on our monitor here. This is a big. Big crowd here this evening, and Jerry, as bad as the weather is today, congratulations to people getting out today. There's Coach Rosenbeck. Yep. Yes, the crowd is really filled in here. You know, they were concerned a little bit with the weather, and here, game time, it really filled up, which we would expect. Coach Rosenbeck, the only high school principal I know who does a daily joke of the day. You can follow him if you want to do that. 
Team's playing some pretty solid defense this possession. Trying to cut it into a 16-point lead. Kanapke works on Bowers and goes up through traffic. Kneecamp tipped it. Bowers rebounds the basketball. Gutsy play for a guy with a couple of fouls. Bikey for three. Kneecamp rebounds. And they trust him to bring the ball up. Yep. How about that? Finally, he finds Mesher. Pullman. And that will be a foul. Hayden Bergman tried to cut off the movement to the middle of the floor and impeded progress, I think, is the word the officials use. Here comes Ranley back into the game. Big opening quarter for Mitchell. Well, you know, I keep talking about the bigs inside for Merritt Local, but those guards do so much for them, too. And they just rotate the five yes. of them around, you know, between Hess and Pullman and Randley and uh, Mesher, and then Ike gets involved. So they just keep rotating them around and always got fresh bodies on the floor. What Randley do hit those first two threes? First two threes, kind of set the tone. Here's Pullman. He's guarded well that time by Beckman. Turnover. Bikey the other way. Bowers in the middle of the floor, ball fakes, and a little runner. That was a really nice shot yes, by Bowers. See that head fake, yes. ball fake out to the corner? He's got a basket at each quarter for four. They've cut the lead to 14. Long three misses. Hayden Beckman hustled into the rebound and drew a foul. St. Henry crowd feels like that's fine. They feel like that's the first foul called in the game. But. Luke Pullman picked up his first. The team has four, does the Marion Local Flyers. Six of them for the Redskins were halfway through quarter number two. Bowers. This is Logan Link, and they're going to throw it back on top. Bowers trying to post up inside. He's got Kanapke on his back. He's going to take a pull-up jumper over him. Boy, that was a nice looking shot. Yes, it was. I love his confidence. Just rise up and shoot it, young man. Back to 12. So Henry making a mini run here. Let's see if they can get it continued. And we're going to get a foul that will go against Hayden Beckman. Not only is it his second, but it also becomes one and one time. And we're going to lead famous recipe free throws. Evan Bowers on that last shot that he hit. He's the kind of player I love on a team. You know what? Yeah. He, he can hit what he, you know, he can hit the key shot. Great rebound, a great floor sense. We saw that on a previous bucket. Brandon Ike to the free throw line. Hess waiting to get in for him. So it is uh, Neekamp is going to in, get into the basketball game. If Ike makes these one-on-one -on -one free throw, then Tate Hess will be able to replace him. There's Pullman. Good look at him. Left-handed Ike. Free throw's a little short. Bowers rebounded that. Three ball here would cut it under 10. Bowers working, working. Goes off last. No, Mikey had a chance for the rebound. Couldn't secure it. Here comes Rantley the other way. They're getting good shots, but they're getting those shots under pressure. Marion Local timeout. 3.07 to go in the second. They still lead by 12. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Mark Shine, Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, I think Coach called that timeout. He wanted to get yes, Hess he back in the game. Yep, he did. You know, I can't wait any longer. There's so much movement back, or up, up and down the floor with no whistles. They're letting them play, which you do expect in the district tournament. So, yeah, he wanted to get him back in. He does have a couple of fouls. Two of the four fouls. That's him with the basketball here. Tate Hess is going to get a high screen from Neekamp. A back cut Mesher, and he's be, he'll be fouled. They've run that back cut pretty well this evening. Foul goes to Curtis Putoff, and to the free throw line will be Jaden Mesher. 68% free throw shooter for our Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Yep, and that's a design cut. We just saw it on the replay there that, you know, you know good plant, go yep. back door. Jerry, if there is a weakness to this uh, Marion local team, they were last in the Midwest Athletic Conference in free throw shooting, just above 60% as a team. They have a few individuals who really shoot it well, as we just see Mesher make the second of his for three points. 
But that, that's something that can get you the tournament. It sure can. You know, we talk about free throws winning championships. And Link comes off a screen, goes to the rim, and swatted out of bounds by Mesher. Kind of knew that was coming. Whoa, we watched him come across the lane and saw it coming, and we're going to get a foul on him, though. Must have been some body contact down low because he sure went up high and got the basketball. Yes, he did. We're going to see that on a replay here. here. And there was a little body contact down inside. Official right on top of it. First foul, Mesher. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw for Logan Link. He is a 68% free throw shooter on the season. Both these teams trying to get to the regional next week in Bowling Green. Makes both of them. That will be on uh, the 7th. They will play the 6 p.m. game at Bowling Green State University. WSM will be there that night. There's Camp with his team up 11. And then Randley, they've got the floor spread a bit. Here's Hess. Knapke down inside, spins into the lane. Bowers defended it pretty well again. He's got a couple of fouls. They went after him, still defended it well. Bikey inside, floater. Nope, Bikey rebound. That was knocked away by Mesher. Yeah, you look at two shots were just altered by that. Link three. Bikey rebounds. Bowers gets a rebound. They are on the offensive glass. Here's Bowers. Skip pass, Bikey. Link again for three. That one's an offensive rebound. We're going to check the stats at halftime. Wow. And that is the one number they really have done. They are hammering the glass. Link now, Bikey. Bikey trying to get loose from Ranley. Hardings. Well, it'll be really nice. Here's Link to the rim. And that's surrounded. They just walled up on him and had nowhere to go. Mesher pushes it the other way. Kneecamp tried to tip that one, kept the rebound himself. Hess, Randley for three. St. Henry rebounds with Hardings. They got a guy leaked out as Bowers down here, right to the rim, and he finishes. That's one of the few, if only, shots that close to the basket that wasn't contested and sent into the bleachers. Here come the Redskins. They've got it down to a nine-point lead, and Link tipped the ball loose, but got called for a foul. Logan Link, I was just thinking if they could get this under double figures by halftime, what a psychological advantage that would be after struggling so much early. Here's Tate Heston, a free throw line. 74% free throw shooter for him. This will be the last one and one as his nine team fouls. That's one of the big keys if you're Coach Rosenbeck. You know, obviously you start the game, you want to be ahead. You know, you want to get out in front. But if you're not, you're just trying to cut it. Missed that one. Hardings rebounds the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. It's nine points. Bikey almost had three. Instead, he goes to the rim, challenges Kanapke and scores. He had that in his eyes. I'm going right at him. We had a perfect view of that. Bikey's got eight. The lead is seven. St. Henry, big second quarter to get back into this one. Here's Kanapke, and he just muscles up and goes right through Luke Bikey to score. That's just great wow. post play. He saw that baseline, went, dropped that left shoulder, and just powered to the rim. Here it is again on a rinse to replay, sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Ultimate Outdoor, there it is. Yep, didn't lower his shoulder, just went square to the basket, powered it up. Another Lee's famous recipe free throw. Kanapke has spent some time with a shoulder injury, and an ankle injury, and that free throw bounced out, and we're going to get a foul on the rebound. Nope, secured it on up out of bounds. Kanapke's going to get a break. Brandon Eich will replace him. They've already got Hess out with his two fouls. 19.4, can the Redskins get even closer? Well, that's the thing, they battled themselves back into it. Again, that's what he wanted, you know, again, wanted to Wanted to be up, but at the same time, just trying to cut it to be back in the game and play better that second half. Here's Pikey. He's headed to the rim. 
Then pass inside, Bowers and he scores. There's a couple of teammates who work well together. That will bring this quarter to an end. St. Henry back in the basketball game, but the Flyers still lead by seven. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Wapakoneta High School where tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's, famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. Mark Shine and Jerry Snodgrass. Here's that last basket, Jerry, of the half, and certainly a momentum changer type situation, which we'll just continued the quarter. Yes, and if you watch that bench after this is made and that red light goes off on that backboard, you see one bench just raring to go. And that could be a big thing going into the second half. Well, coaches and, and media and all, we always talk about the first two to three minutes of the second half. But tonight, that could really be significant. Can Mary Local get it going again, or does St. Henry continue the run they had at the end of the quarter? Well, so often at the end of a game, you know, when you talk to a coach in an interview, you know, you always talk about the game was won or lost in those first three minutes of the second half. And I think tonight is very descriptive of, of that. St. Henry has a 24 points on the board, quarter scores of 10 and 14. They are led in scoring by uh, Evan Bowers. He has 10. Luke Pikey has 8. Mary Local quarter scores of 25 and 6 for their 31. They're led in scoring by Austin Niekamp with 13. You talked about offensive rebounding, and that certainly played up for St. Henry in, that, in the first half. Well, you know, you can make a lot out of statistics sometimes, you know, more than they're really mean. But there are some very key stats in that first half, I think. And one of those, Mary, uh, St. Henry is out rebounding Mary Local 21-14. But the big thing is they have 11 offensive boards, yep. 11 of those 21. The other thing, too, you look at the fact that Mary Local has shot 57% from three. St. Henry is only one of nine from three. Does that keep up? I don't know. Yeah. That could be a big key, though, in this second half, whether it does or doesn't. Well, part of the rally is because in quarter number two, the Flyers were just two of seven at the free throw line, and two of those were the front ends of one and one. So they're a potential two of nine from the free throw line, and uh, that certainly was a part of scoring only six points in the quarter. And it will be St. Henry basketball as we go to quarter number three. And plus, Marion Local was in the bonus pretty early in that first half. And several players with a couple of fouls. Nobody got to three fouls in the opening half. And Caden Bergman will be the inbounder. I love to see what offensive set they come out with, you know, after having, you know, 10 minutes in the locker room. This is Bowers. They there it is. in a back cut to Bikey, but it was well defended. And Hess knocked it out of bounds. Tate Hess, the only flyer with a couple of fouls in the first half. It's interesting. Bowers looked over to the bench, you know, after that, like, what I do, it wasn't open. You know, they called that at halftime, and we're going to come out and do this, and it just wasn't there. When you're playing somebody in your conference and playing them for the third time on the year, they, they know you. Yes. That ball is a tipped out of bounds. It was. Mesher hit that one out of bounds as they disrupted another offensive set. That's another one of those statistics, Mark. We didn't talk about it tonight, but in other games we've talked about how important deflections are mm -hmm. and, you know, how that disrupts the flow of an offense. Bowers. Bergman spins into the lane, jumper. Bowers crashes the offensive boards, but Kanapke is able to go get that one. It's difficult to reach over Kanapke to try to get that. Hess into the lane, and Bowers didn't mean to, but tipped it out of bounds. Ray Local has been in the state tournament five times. They have championships in 2018, 03, and 1975. St. Henry's been in this champion state tournament six times. And they have championships four different years. Of course, the very famous 90-91 back-to-back sequence, also in 2004 and also in 1979. So a lot of state experience for these two schools. I have some fond memories of that 2004. Was, or uh, one of those. I can't remember which one Austin it was. Austin a little jumper in the lane. And he had uh, 10 in the opening quarter. He's got 15 now. First points of quarter number three go the way of Marion Local, and then Hardings gets a reverse layup through traffic. He's got four. We don't mean to look ahead, Mark, but we're also talking about with four players, four starters back, how good oh. St. Henry can be next year. No pressure, but I mean, you yeah. know, their potential is very, very good. 
Mesher looking for somebody under pressure, finally finds Hess. Here's Niekamp, going to catch and go back to the rim, but Mikey cuts him off. Mesher there. Now Niekamp gets a three look. Kanapke went up strong for that one and scored. He's got a defensive rebound, an offensive rebound, and a basket here in less than two minutes. Deja vu all over again. Mark, one year ago we sat here and did this. You know, Marion Local was playing, and those two bigs were in the game, and I just, man, they're going to be good. Yep. They have really improved. Mikey jump hook, another Kanapke rebound. Nine-point lead, trying to extend it. Pullman pull-up jumper. Mikey rebounds. Mesher knocked it away from him. Logan Link's going to get a ball screen. Nope, he's going to head to the rim instead, and Logan Link finishes. Don't Big see too many of those. Just take to the rim and score. He's got four in the game, and we're back to a seven. Good, strong move. Long pass ahead, and Bergman steals it. Hess almost got that one back. Instead, Bowers gets a deep three. Wow. Wow. And from the parking lot, Evan Bowers has a home and insurance three-point field goal. We're back to four points. He was open, and he said, why not? Why not? Here's Hess to the rim. Hands off to Kanapke and finishes with a Tate Hess assist. Kanapke's got nine in the game now. Bowers wanting to load it up again. Bergman, now Hardings. Logan Link just setting things up. Comes off a screen from Bikey and lost it. Oh, Bikey got, Bikey got it back. Bergman trying to turn the corner, spins into the lane. Jumps over, defender and scores. He's got four. Second time he's done that today. Yeah, you can really see that momentum confidence that they got going into the half. You're playing with a lot more confidence. It's four points. This is knee camp. Pullman. Kanapke down low again. The pass was a bit high. Forced him off the block. Mesher for three. Hardings rebounds. Here come the Redskins again. Link for three. High arching shot, rebound, another offensive board. Bikey wow. scores in the lane. He's a double figure scorer with 10. The game's at two. And another one off of an offensive rebound. Lee Camp, what's the call? Timeout. Marion Local. Flyers struggling to hang on. St. Henry on a roll. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our three-point three point field goals tonight here at Wapakoneta are sponsored by Home and Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group, with two locations to serve you in Chickasaw and in Versailles. Jerry Snodgrass, St. Henry, 11, to Mary Local 6 here in the quarter. Here they come. Just keep, just keep playing. That's exactly right. That's good coaching. You know, kids I don't just, get rattled, you know, and you just – you just settle you know, them down. And, and you talk about coaching. That's something you sometimes see out of senior-laden teams. But younger teams, they tend to panic a little bit or they press. Or, and not this group. The coach right. has got to play. And let's see if Marion Local can, uh, can turn it around again or if this St. Henry continues. Here's Niekamp in the middle of the floor. And then on the other side of things, and I don't expect Marion Local to do this, but Sometimes you get teams then start to back up and play on their heels a little bit, you know, a little too cautious. There's a guy who's not playing cautious. Nope. Jack Kanapke spun in the lane and went to the goal with some authority. Mikey gets his second foul. Kanapke's got nine points, and we'll get a pair of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. at our Layfield Industrial scoreboard. That's the first foul of half number two by either team, and we played almost five minutes. Here's Kanapke again. That one hung on the rim and wouldn't go, and Kate Bergman rebounds. They could take the lead with a three, tie it with a two. 
And we're going to get a reach foul. Well, they see that right there because they have offensively, St. Henry has brought their players out and they bring Kanapke and, and uh, Niekamp out with them. So that lane was open going into the basket. There's a lob inside, Bikey. He's going to jump over Hess and score. We're tied. Bikey's got a dozen. They've come all the way back, being down 15 and more. Yes, there's Kanapke trying to post up against Bowers. Bowers has a couple of fouls. And they stumble over each other. And Bikey's out in transition right to the rim. And St. Henry's ahead. Bikey with 14, pushes his team lead to two. Well, doesn't that answer a lot of oh questions my. we had going into the half? There's Kanapke inside again, and this time Bowers will take a foul fall, and Kanapke will fall over him. Evan Bowers has three fouls. Going to take it out of bounds, right in front of our position. You can see he went down really easy, stuck his leg out. That's a good call. Yes, it was. And Lou Bowers does have three fouls in the game. And he's going to set for a moment. Here's a lob to Kanapke. He finishes and draws a contact. 11 for him going to the free throw line. Boy, you look at Kanapke, and he's just got that give me the ball. Let, let me settle this down. Foul goes to Bergman, his second. Here's Kanapke's free throw. That also is hard, and Harding rips it away, and then Ranley slaps him across the arm. Mitchell Ranley has a pair of fouls. What did we used to say in the playground, Jerry? It's on? Yeah. It's on right now. Yep. These two teams are going after it. Bowling Green regional berth on the line. Here's Link. Bikey skip pass. And Link again. Hardings. Bergman in the lane. This is going to be a link shot. Nope, he's going to give it up. Patient possession this time. Hardings line lane. Rebound inside Delson. He's going to dribble out of traffic and then find Bikey for a floater. Wow. He's got that floater down, doesn't he? And once again, off of an offensive rebound. It was. Back to another two-point lead, St. Henry. He camps at the scores table waiting to check in again. Hess. His forces one up but draws a foul in the process. Two-shot free throws. Tate Hess. Where'd the foul go to? Yeah, you know, I think Hess did more of a job of drawing that foul than, he did. Yep. you know, he just went right into the arm of this whoever time, that was on. I, they make the free throw. That was Delson. His famous recipe, chicken free throw. Kneecamp is going to take the place of Kanapke. Hess needs to make this one to tie it. His first two points of the game makes it a 41 all game. Link's going to get a high screen from Hardings. Bergman. Elsythe working with the basketball. Bergman's going to go baseline again on Randley. Short shot for him, bounces around, bounces around. This time, Hess rebounds. They've but got even, numbers. And even there, they had inside position on that. That pass from Hess was just a shade high, trying to get it to Randley on the baseline. Bowers will be back in the game with an offensive possession. He's got three fouls. It's a good chance to put him in. I hope he doesn't draw an offensive foul, but certainly not have to play defense. Logan Link. A 
They're going to play last shot. And they're also bringing him out, yeah. you know, and bringing Niekamp out with him. Here's Link. They're going to make sure they're at worst tied going into quarter number four. They'd like to score and take a lead going into the fourth. Link and Ike matched up out front. Approaching 15, last shot time. Bikey. Bikey in the post. Tipped away from behind by Hess. Very local will get a shot. Hess, that ball's blocked, however. Bergman's going to throw it the length of the floor and will be tied at 41 as we head to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Wapakoneta. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Layfield Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Greenville and in Coldwater. Jerry, 17-10 quarter. The middle two quarters have been, what, 27-16. I did my 31, excuse me, 31-16. So they're right back into basketball game. We're tied going into the fourth. 16 for Luke Bikey, 13 for Evan Bowers, 13 Austin Niekamp, 11 Jack Kanapke. Two teams scoring so far. And just as we said, coach is sitting on the end line here. We said, just keep playing, yep. be solid, and you have a chance to get right back in it, and they did. They did, and now, here's Marion Local with the basketball. That's their starting lineup in the basketball game. Tate Hess. Kanapke had six in the third quarter. He's gonna go through Bikey. Bikey blocks his shot. Here's Bergman in transition against Niekamp, left-handed no, but it's tipped out of bounds and it will go to Mary Local. But even there, I mean, again, I keep saying it every possession, but boy, I would hate to play against them, you know, rebounding-wise. They just get a hand on everything when that shot goes up and it's missed. Tate Hess tied at 41. He's going to work the lane, go off glass and score. Nice, solid move. Tate Hess has four in the game now. Kept the ball up. This team's back on top. Delsa's working the lane. A shot almost went in. Niekamp had it, and Bowers tipped it away from him. No, it will stay with. Say Henry, right? Yeah, I'm waiting for yep. a call. It's going to stay at that end. And Coach Greta Miller thought he got yeah. pounded on that, you know. And no wonder he couldn't get the rebound. Here's a lob inside Bikey. Climbed the ladder that time, did Hess and Pullman to keep him from scoring. Bowers and Hess will pick up foul number three. I mentioned that earlier about Bowers. He's just so strong with the basketball, you know, and he just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Third foul on the Flyers. Redskins have four. Remember, St. Henry only has a couple of timeouts remaining. They used to two in the opening quarter and then one in the second. Bergman trying to score on Mesher. Niekamp comes to help. And Bikey will look from three. Rebound Pullman, numbers this way. Here's Hess to the rim again. And he's going to draw a foul on Bikey. Challenged him again. We talked about Hess just making so many things happen for them. And right there, he has good court sense knowing he's got the lane to take it. Why not draw the foul? Very local is 5 of 13 from the free throw line today. Hess makes that one. Our Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. He's got five points in the game. And six, four of them here in this quarter. This team leads by four on the Layfield Industrial scoreboard. Link. Bowers calls a play. For him to go to the rim, but it's blocked by Niekamp, and he's gonna Niekamp's get gonna get a body foul. Austin Niekamp will get his second foul. Luke Bowers will go to the free throw line. Evan Bowers will go to the free throw line. He has not been there yet today, but he's a 79% free throw shooter on the season. Got him a little bit with the body there. That's one of the things that he does do, and Niekamp does so well. He is a shot blocker. 
you know, of course you can say that, of course he is yep. because of his size, but no, 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 it takes a skill, you know, to typically not foul and, you know, to time that right, very good at that. 14 for Evan Bowers, 15, cuts the lead to two. Now some full court pressure. Luke Pullman will bring it over midcourt. Hess has tried to take over some offense here in this quarter. He's gone to the rim a couple of times. Here's Kneekamp. Mesher is going to get a three look. Jay Mesher. Quiet game for him this evening, but not with that. Three-point field goal by Holman Insurance. Big bucket for Marion Local to kind of break that drought a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, St. Henry timeout, 5.48 to go in the basketball game. They're using timeout number four. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. Let's look at the crowd we have this evening. Really filled in nicely tonight. What a what an awesome crowd! Yeah, you know, is, district tournament. You know, trophies on the line. You know, and every bit about it. You know, the student sections are solid. And hey, what else is there to do on a rainy Friday night? Especially when you are a a, a member of the MAC. Yes. You find a sporting event to go to like this one. St. Henry has taken timeout number four. St. Henry has five team fouls. Marion Local has three timeouts remaining. They have four team fouls, and the arrow favors St. Henry should that become an instant of the game. They can play some zone. It just looked like it. Yep, came out. Uh, I think they're playing triangle in two. Yeah, they are. Because uh, Mesher got called as he held. Bikey headed to the rim. Mesher is the second foul, team's fifth, and they were also playing man up on Bowers with Ranley. So they're going to play a little triangle zone and man up two guys. Let's see if they stay in that out of bounds. Bergman finally finds Bikey in the corner. They're all going man to man now. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Logan Link gets a three. That and looked after, on from our yeah, angle. I, didn't again, it? when that ball went from where we're at on the baseline here, that looked good. Here's Ranley, throws it inside knee camp. <laughs> knee camp. Backs down, little turnaround jumper. Ranley got the rebound, we tried to score in the air, and Bergman fouled him from behind. Caden Bergman now has three fouls. Mitchell Ranley will go to the free throw line. I like Austin Neekamp's patience. He got probably got pushed, you know, as he was posting up on the block. And, you know, a lot of crowd noise, but he just kept right on playing. Ranley had a pair of three-point field goals in the opening quarter onslaught. That's his first points since then. Ali's famous recipe free throw. He'll get a second. And that one doesn't go. And after a collision, the ball ends up in St. Henry's hands. But they're down six now with five to go. They stayed in that zone a bit. Yeah, they did. Three guys playing zone, two guys playing man. Here's Link. Knapp get to run way high up to help guard him, though. Corner jump shot, Bergman. Long. Mitchell Randley was able to get the rebound amongst the trees. Here's Hess. Knapke inside with Bikey on his back. Face up move. And they double down. Kanapke, the coach called timeout. 4.28 to go in the basketball game. You're watching high school basketball, WSO OSN. We're back at Wapak Canetta, where tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delta. It's called Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Coach Gunnar took a timeout. His post guy was surrounded with bodies. He took a timeout to save a possession. His third. Well, these possessions become uh, so critical, I think, for momentum reasons. You know, saw early when St. Henry got down. Well, they can't afford to get down anymore. Hess looks, 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 and finally finds Mesher in the corner. Approaching halfway through quarter number four. 
Kanapke, base inside, going to power move inside, goes up on Bowers, rebound, nope, Bowers just ripped that one away, <laughs> and part of Randley as well. You got to say both calmed down after that. That's though. exactly that right. Here's a drive to the goal that will be done by Hayden Beckman, and he will get to go to the free throw line. That goes unnoticed, I think, in so many cases. But, Mark, we've seen so many times where that just occurred and how physical that was. That turns it, that escalates into something. Not here. Yeah. Not here at all. They just, just moved right out of it. Just play. go play. Hayden Beckman shoots the free throws here. Makes the first of our Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. These are big. A no, couple are. points, here. you know, with the, shot, uh, with the st uh, clock stopped. Everything is going to be big here in the last four minutes of this one. The winner gets to go to Bowling Green State University on the 7th to play at 6 p.m. Regional finals are the 10th at 7 p.m. Both free throws go. Four-point game. Winner to BG, it's always been, even in the old arena uh -huh. and the new one, it's always been such a great place to play. Kanapke, knee camp, finish inside. He's got uh, 17 in the game. Those two guys work so well together. This is going to be a three out of the corner that's long. Mesher was battling for the rebound, tipped it to Kneecamp. It's six. Kneecamp thought about a three, didn't he? Yes, he did. He's he made was some ready out to there earlier in the game. Thing is, you know he can. He certainly can. We've got Kanapke inside. And he gets a shot blocked by Bowers. But offensive rebound this time goes the other way. Austin Niekamp's got 19 now. What a nice touch inside like that. So soft. Eight-point game in St. Henry. Just a single timeout remaining. This will be a three out of the corner. It's blocked by Kanapke. Yeah, don't you dare. <laughs> It is kind of impressive, though, when you think of 6'9 and his size to get to the corner and cover yeah. a three-point shooter. 3.03 to go. Bowers to inbound. Tough spot to inbound. It really is. But he finds Link inside with a couple of big bodies in front of him. Jump shot, hook shot in the lane. That time it's Mesher secures the rebound and then to Hess. Any foul puts Marion Local at the free throw line. Austin Niekamp, skip pass, Kanapke, teammate to teammate, 13 for him, the lead is 10. Two great things about that, such a crisp pass and such a great catch, both hands. 2.30 to go, Logan Link tries to go over Niekamp, I think he got a hand on that one, Bauer saved it, and it's going to go out of bounds off of St. Henry. These last few possessions defensively, the two bigs have caused all that. Yes, they have. And you know, I just wonder if St. Henry expended so much energy to get back yes. in the basketball game that it was just difficult to, to sustain it here for all 32 minutes. And I think mentally it's hard to do that. You know, when that momentum started to shift back again to uh, Marion Local. Randley gonna throw it back out wildly to Link. St. Henry with numbers. Shot missed. Scramble for the rebound, and it's going to be a held ball. But you look how many possessions where St. Henry has gone in there. or just so much traffic that they've shot an off-balance shot. It, you know, they go in with the idea it's going to be there, but then all of a sudden a, a big Paul shows up, and it's it's hard to get over. It. It's a 14-4 to four quarter so far for the Flyers. And they push this lead back to 10. Logan Link goes way in the backcourt to secure the basketball. Bikey. Here's a three from Link. Randley tips the ball to Hess. Good heads up play on his part. Kneecamp's out running to Mesher. To Kneecamp. Turnaround jumper will roll around and fall in. Points 20 and 21 for him. He's had big opening and big fourth quarters tonight. You know, I said it before, but what a soft touch. Bergman, runner in the lane. Three flyers go after the rebound, and Kanapke just takes it away from everybody. Yeah, another one where the, you know, the big hands in there just alter that shot. Here's Hess, past Kneecamp. Behind the glass, couldn't get it to go. Caught the ball a little deep. 
Bowers the other way. That ball bounces off the rim. And that's where I think the fatigue is set in right now, too. Yeah, you're you right. know, of not be, notice how many offensive boards they've not been able to get in these last couple minutes. They were tremendous effort in quarters two and three to get back in. Here's Mesher. And his ball was kicked. We'll be back to do some post-game discussions when this one comes to an end. Here comes Luke Pullman back in their basketball game. And Austin Decamp heads to the bench. Brandon Ike's going to come in. Yeah, what a game Randy for Austin will step Decamp. out. Yes, sir. Try to get some final stat numbers for you tonight as well. You know, I think I could cover 22 games for Aaron Local, and it's 22 times I could say somebody different. You know, what a great game tonight. Yeah. They're just, they're, they're so balanced. I think I could watch Mary Local and San Henry play about every week. Yes, I could. Playing a little pitch and catch out front. Kanapke down inside, and he will just throw it back out. Pullman's going to take a three out of the corner. Bergman rebounds. Working into the lane, kick out. This will be Bowers for three. You know that happens all the time, don't you? Coleman Insurance three-point field goal. Shot taken on this end. Well, maybe they shouldn't have. You know darn well they're going to get one on the other end then. We're going to take a break, too, with 25.7 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. Evan Bowers just nailed a three-point field goal, and our three-point field goal slider is sponsored by Holman Insurance, your trusted local insurance specialist, member of the Wayne Insurance Group with two locations to serve you at Chickasaw and in Versailles. So Henry has taken their final timeout. They trail by nine here with just under 26 seconds to go in the basketball game. You did, Jerry, if you didn't care who won or lost, you got your money's worth tonight. Sure did. Which we would expect. We Absolutely. Uh, that is a dead solid fact. And I just, I've said it, you know, from the onset of how much, how improved St. Henry has been through the year. Here's Decamp. His pass is blocked out of bounds. And they'll do it on the sideline pass now, right in front of the St. Henry bench. Yeah, they bring they bring Austin Decamp back in the game. And that's more to be yeah. a Harding's, receiver. Harding's tipped that basketball. Scramble to see who gets it. And Kanapke, but he throws it to Harding's. The only senior on this St. Henry team. Here's Kanapke in the pack, and he wanted to dunk it. Instead, he got fouled by putoff. That was tough because he was turned away from the basket when he yeah. caught it. He didn't have the he best angle to try to put that one down, but he was going to try. Here it is again on yeah. the replay. Kanapke will go to the free throw line on our Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws tonight. He's got 13 points. Make it 14. You now you were talking about you know, some, of his, lots of guys in the game, Jerry. some of his free throw shooting, yeah. but he has a very good looking shot. Ryan Holman's into the basketball game. Let's see who else checked in. Uh, looks like Kyle Ungren checked into the game. Let's see, we're getting a lot of St. Henry bodies into the game. Brody Schwartz is in the game. So is Nicholas Berkey. Uh, Christopher Berkey's in. So is Dominic Schwartz. And Carson Harrod's in. So I think we, we got everybody, I hope, who checked into the game as he does make both free throws, his 15th point. Here comes uh, Ungren into the basketball games now after the free throw by Kanapke. You know what was really something, and I'm, I'm probably putting words in people's mouth, but when all those players came in, I think both crowds cheered for both teams. I, I, think I really right. do, yeah. out of the respect of it. And how hard and how well both yep. teams competed this evening. Here's a jump shot that will go at the buzzer. I think that was uh, Nicholas Berkey will yes. get a basket. What it will do is make the final score, Marion Local 59, St. Henry 50. They're going to cut the nets down and pass out some hardware, and we're going to take a break and come back with our post-game show. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Wapakoneta High School, where the Mary Local Flyers behind us are cutting down the championship nets. They are district champions here in Division Four. We did so with a 59-50 win over St. Henry. 
Jerry, a tremendous basketball game, but 19-9 Flyers in the fourth quarter. Yes, it was, and I think there are a couple key stats that, you know, we talked about all the energy expended to get back into the game, and sometimes that maybe is overrated, but you kind of go back to where it shows, I think, we talked about they had 15, uh, uh, excuse me, they had 11 offensive rebounds in the first half, only four the rest of the way. And I think that was the energy it took away from them. It was harder, plus you give uh, Marion local credit. The other part of that too, um, uh, they, uh, St. Henry shot 16% from three point. And I think that was critical early when they had open looks. They did, let's go through it. Let's talk about St. Henry a little bit. They're gonna finish the season at 14 and 12. Tremendous middle two quarters, two great juniors, Evan Bowers, Luke Beike. This is the team that's built for the future. Yes, it is. You know, we talked about they've played each other twice. I can't wait to see the games next year. Yeah, that will happen. Let's look at uh, Marion Local then. They're now 21-4, and four, moving into the regionals next week. They were led by Austin Niekamp with 21. They got uh, another 15 from Jack Kanapke. The bigs really stepped up, and they really turned it on in the fourth quarter. You know, and especially, I, I was able to see them. You know, we covered them against New Bremen earlier in the year, big rival game. I see it, I've seen a little bit of tape on them, but at the same time, I'm just amazed how much they have gradually improved. They are a four statewide to, to reckon with. This is a Marion local team that will move on on the 7th of March, and they will play at 6 o'clock in Bowling Green, and WOSN will be there. We want to thank the athletic director here, Mike Watt and Drew Golden, who put this tournament together for us. We also want to thank our crew tonight. That's Wayne Getz in the truck along with Derek Henry. Our crew people, Jacob O'Neill, Seth Hegemeyer, Ethan Jordan did our camera work. You guys have done a great job for us all year long. We really appreciate it. But Mary Local will move on next week into the regionals, 59-50 over St. Henry. You've been watching high school basketball on WOSN. <laughs>